Okay, everybody, today we're going to take a look at supply chain spend analysis. Many organizations have fairly loose controls over their spending. This can be characterized by lots of transactions, purchasing being carried out by pretty much anybody, lots of suppliers where we don't spend that much per year, but we may have a lot of transactions, a lack of formal agreements like contracts, and lots of suppliers within commodity groups. This can lead to a fairly fragmented supply chain where spend is just not leveraged. So we need to get to grips with that, and the best place to start is with the data. Now luckily for us, whenever you buy anything, um, you typically trap two sets of, uh, two pieces of data. It's normally the purchase order and the uh, purchase invoice from the supplier. So let's take a look at how we can use that data to get the most out of our supply base. So we're going to want to get the last 12 months worth of uh, data. Uh, we're going to want to uh, summarize that data by supplier, including the money that we spent and the number of transactions. Um, ideally, we want to think about the commodity groups that those suppliers might fit in. And uh, we want to create a list from the analysis so that we can share it easily and that people can understand it. So first of all, let's look at the two um, sources of data we could use. Now, we'd really uh, recommend that you use uh, your data from your finance system, and that comes from your supplier invoices. Um, and primarily this will give you the supply name, the invoice value and the spend within the period you're going to analyze, the quantity of invoices, and the uh, transaction date. Now there is some drawbacks to this data. Um, firstly, you won't get the detail like part numbers or descriptions as to what material is being uh, bought. And the, um, the other downside is that you might not really get a good idea of how many purchase orders have been raised. The other form of data that you could use is uh, your purchase order data. Again, you can capture your supply name, the spend. Um, you get the benefit of being able to capture the part number or the material description um, and the number of purchase order transactions raised um, and, of course, the order date. Um, the downside is um, you may miss spend that's not on a purchase order. Now, you might think that's not very important and all your spend is on a purchase order. But you'd be really surprised how much spend uh, goes on in a company away from its purchasing department. So if you grab that data from your finance system, that's going to show you. So you've obtained your data, uh, you've summarized it by supplier, you've added your commodity groups, you've figured out how many transactions that you have, um, and you've got your list there in front of you. So let's take a look at now what you can use it for. So as a reminder, um, it's really important that your list is a summary. It shouldn't be oodles and oodles of individual transactions. It should be a summary of the spend in the time period that you're analyzing. So once you've got your list together, um, you should be able to see where your, uh, where your hard-earned dollars are going, um, which supplies you're spending the money uh, with, on what commodities, um, finding out whether buyers are using the correct suppliers for a particular uh, product, helping you uh, optimize your processes and making sure you're getting um, maximum value for those hard-earned dollars. So if you remember our graphic from earlier on in the presentation with our fragmented supply base, um, once we've analyzed our spend and put our suppliers into commodity groups, we should see where um, we're spending our money. And that's important because we might find that we have um, lots and lots and lots of suppliers within a given commodity uh, category. And we're not using our spend um, uh, as well as we could. Uh, we're not getting the best discounts, um, and we're not getting the best deals, ultimately. The other point is, you may have contracts that you want your buyers to use. Um, the spend analysis will show you that um, they may not be using those supplies, they may be going to their own favourites, um, and um, that's called Maverick Spend, and through using your supplier um, spend analysis um, information, you can see that spend and tackle it in your own way. The other thing, of course, is learning who your key suppliers are. Um, the supplier spend analysis should show you those who you're spending the most with, who you may need to focus on strategically. A quick tip as well is whenever you're analysing this sort of financial information, take a look just to see whether there's a, a miscellaneous account or a general account, you know, a dumping ground for spend that doesn't have a supplier account set up on the account system. Um, often this is, can be a real gold mine. Um, and can be a place where a lot of cost is hidden. Um, typically it's where supplier accounts haven't been set up on the account system. It's used just generally as a bit of a, uh, as a, bit of a dumping ground. 
The other really useful piece of information uh, to take a look at is transactions versus spend. You'll often find suppliers um, with a relatively low spend but a high transaction count. The analysis can uh, provide you with the prompt to really look for a more efficient way of procuring goods and materials from these sorts of suppliers. So in summary then, spend analysis is a really key tool in helping you to improve your procurement activity. It really enables you to see your supply chain, see which supplies you're using, where your uh, money is going. It should be the starting tool in many of your management activities around the strategic uh, management of your suppliers and it can really help you reduce your costs and improve your efficiency. So thanks for uh, listening to us today and if you want more information check out our website.